Hey folks, it's Amy from Colorado Mountain Living, and you can see behind me that our reel with electrical cable is empty. This is our big weekend for getting our electric trench done. So coming on Monday is our electrician, and she's going to do a pre-inspection of our trench before we call the state person over here to sign off on our trench inspection for the electric. So we're hoping that this is our big week of getting electrical done. We do have our electrician booked for two days and she's squeezing us in. So it's gonna be Monday and then the following Monday. So it's gonna take a couple of weeks to finish everything, but hopefully we'll be done and have full power by then. We've also finished the chimney and gave our wood stove a test run. So I wanna to talk to you guys about that as well, but I wanna show you all the work we've been doing. It sounds like it's kind of a simple job just to roll some cable into a trench, but if you can imagine something that weighs a ton, trying to get that all the way 500 feet down a hill into the road is actually quite a task. So let's get to it. I'm gonna show you guys exactly how we did it and fill you in on some of the surprises we encountered along the way. flattening the end of the conduit here so we can drill holes in it and use it as bracing for the chimney. How long is this piece? It's 10 feet. 10 feet. The other one is five. So Brian bought these 10 foot pieces because what came with the chimney was just five foot pieces. So these are significantly longer. We will be able to reach further up. This is the less expensive lift that you can rent and it's less than half the price of the, of the big lift that uh, we were looking at. Um, it still has a reach of about 30 feet. It takes a little while to figure out the controls, but it can definitely get you all the way up there and over your project so that you're, that you're not having to worry about ladders and staging and all that kind of thing. So it definitely simplifies the job, makes it worth the one day rental. The other cool thing about this lift is that it's towable. So you don't have to worry about delivery fees and waiting on the delivery. Uh, you do have to go get it yourself, but it's um, towable and uh, does the job pretty good. We were fortunate to have the roofers still there when we had to install the rest of the chimney, so they offered to help us out. Uh, they put their chicken hook ladder over the edge of the roof up there, and um, one of them got up on the ladder, and then the other one helped Brian stack up the chimney parts and secure the bracing into place. So it, it turned out being a three-man job, but I'm sure it took much less time. I think total time for them to do all of this was 30 minutes, whereas if Brian was probably by himself, it might have been a few hours worth of a project because there's just so many moving parts. And let me add that it was extremely windy on this day. It, we were getting gusts of 20 miles an hour. So even the roofers were like, whoa, that's a, that's a lot to handle. And just look how high this chimney's going. This is even the last piece. So it was, it's definitely um, something that you need to have multiple hands doing at the same time. Even with a lift, it was definitely one of those jobs that you don't want to be doing by yourself. So we were super happy to have the roofers help us with that and we compensated them for their time. So they were happy as well. Well, it looks like a big diaper, something you put on a bed. Go ahead and step on it. Go get out of there. So you're gonna wrap it around the pipe? Yeah. Down here to protect the joists? Protect this area. Yeah. And then I'm gonna wrap, there's enough I'm gonna wrap some on, on the other side. Heat shield. This is ceramic fiber blanket. There were so many different uh, choices. You could get like 50 feet for $150 or that much for $75. Hmm. But yeah, there was. I wanted to get more, but there was, it was either less or an extreme amount. An extreme amount. Hmm. Let me see how it works, and then yeah. I guess if you have to order a second one, you can do that. Yeah, because I we might need to put some all the way up in the on the first floor because uh -huh. it'll be cold there. So yeah, that'd be cheaper than, and we can use it later for building the. Uh, redoing my uh, 
um, smelting kiln, or mm -hmm. uh, we can also, you know, make a an exterior kiln for pottery or whatever. Pottery. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll do our own thing. Okay. So he's wrapping the ceramic blanket around the chimney pipe and then securing it with wire. And then he made a little nest of little support from a piece of metal there so it can sit on it without sliding down. Look, this is the moment we've all been waiting for. <laughs> Brian's going to light up the wood stove. Oh. <laughs> Maybe I can take my jacket off. <laughs> okay, we are dying of curiosity. How much heat is this little furnace going to put out? Um, we're, okay, we're cheating right now using a bigger torch to get it going, but we just don't want to waste any time. We want to get this puppy going and see what is happening. So as the fire catches, we check outside to see how the chimney's working. And it looks like the smoke was coming out okay. It's very windy outside. Seem loose. My thoughts were be it, because of the smell, I was thinking maybe there's some kind of curing oil or some kind of fume that's burning off of the stove, but it just seemed like it was coming out from like the crack in the top. So I don't know. It was hard to tell if it there was like a smoke leak, but the smell was so bad that I was convinced somehow that it was just some kind of paint or oil curing that was burning off so i don't know what do you guys think have you had any experience with a wood stove doing this the first time you ever use it um just you know we ha couldn't even close the door the whole place smoked up really bad and we had to um, open up the windows and clear everything out so it was, what a bummer so behind me brian is working on digging the electric trench across the driveway Right now, our priority is getting our electric done. So two things have to happen. We have to have a trench inspection, a we, and we have to have our house inspection done by the state in order to certify and pass and pass our house inspection as well. We've had this trench dug for a few weeks now, and Brian's just getting to doing across the driveway because, you know, functional reasons, we have to drive across that driveway every day. So we'll put some boards over it for now, but we're hoping the electrician is coming on Monday. We'd like her to take a look at our trench with the cable in it and the two ends and how they connect and see if she has any other suggestions that might help us pass our inspection. Because she's not the one that does it. It's the state that come, state department comes and does the inspection. So hopefully she'll get to tell us if we have to change anything by Monday. But I'm hoping that on Monday I can call and make a reservation for the inspector to come out and maybe he can come Tuesday because Something that's happening this week, lots of snow in the forecast. Of course, it's Colorado mountains, so that's what's gonna happen in these months. So we'd love to get that trench inspection done before the snow sets in and get that buried over before we get frozen ground. Right, the trench is dug across the driveway and here's our little bridge for the time being to get up and down. Hopefully we only have to have this in place for a few days and hopefully we can get our trench inspection completed this early this week and then we can backfill. And of course backfilling is going to require culling out all of the large rocks and making sure it's mostly soft dirt going on top of the cable. Exactly what we had to do for the septic. So Brian's strategy here is to, let's create a weightless spool. He inserted a large piece of pipe clamp in the middle of the spool and is using that to be able to lift up the entire spool with the forks from the tractor. And that way he can move it and position it into a place where he can tilt the forks upward and that will keep the spool on the tractor without rolling off. And that way we can be able to pull the spool down the hill 
from you know pulling on the cable itself uh, while it's staying in place. So the strategy is to get the the cable lined up next to the trench, roll it all out flat on the ground, and then move the cable over into the trench when we're ready. So that way we can roll it all out um, and pull it without having to mess around with it already in the trench. And I thought that was a really great idea. So you're going to roll it out first and then move it over into the trench? Yeah. Sure it stays on that thing. Yeah. He's going to drag it all the way down onto the side of the trench, and then we will progressively move it over into the trench after the whole thing is laid out. So far, so good. The forks seem to be staying pointed upward. He's able to still pull it. This is like one of those ropes at the gym when you're doing your workout on those heavy ropes. Seems like there's quite a bit more cable. Okay, what's he doing now? Gonna use the car. Drag the rest. Since we don't have the hill anymore at our advantage. We're out of hill, so it's a long drag all the way to the road. I think I'm going to be nervous driving over that myself. So I suppose he's going to fashion it to the tow rope, to the tow. like the cable is loosening up a little bit on the reel. You're almost there, almost to the road. Like five or six. Okay, just a little bit. There's like five or six. All the way around? 
Yeah. I didn't want you to pull it so it would roll down the hill. Yeah. <laughs> so. I kept my eyes on the rear view mirror. Well, I, there was actually only four wraps oh. around it. Oh. So as you pulled it, I was like, oh. This should be good. We only gotta go down. We gotta pass the pole, so hopefully. You have to go past the pole? Well, it's gotta come up the pole, like. To the bottom of the box? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So we have to get conduit that goes all the way up to the top, I guess. And I don't know, does that mean that the power company? Or we have to... I, I don't know who makes the final connections. It's gonna be an arm workout. Is that an arm workout or what? Yeah. The wire here, just on the edge of the two by four, so now I can run that three inch conduit up and it shouldn't interfere with the, that box, hopefully. Hmm. That exterior breaker I put out there. I guess those don't like drones or wood. So the disconnect was on the goes on the wall. I guess high enough up that you can roll run the wire down or right through it and then down. Because the wire will come up in the bottom and come out the top and into the inside and then in the panel. Okay. Jen gets to figure out the rest of that. <laughs> That's the electrician's job. We got it to the we got it to the shutoff and she can figure out the rest. On the other end you just have to put the conduit up the pole and that's and then yep. thread it up through and that's the end. You that's, think? That's the end uh, for the then I have to run the conduit from the meter box. The meter box is like this tall. Uh -huh. be on the top of the conduit like this, and then I gotta run conduit all the way up. Oh right. Well, I had to run down the hill and catch Brian before he finished his work here on the meter box, but looking good. We're almost ready for electrician tomorrow. This might be the very last nice day of the year. I'm overly warm in a black sweater right now. It's probably 60, uh, feels like it's 70 degrees with the sun on me, but it's really quite warm right now outside. Don't need a jacket, light breeze. And that forecast is not going to stay for long, folks. So we definitely have to get our wood stove situation figured out. L love to hear your comments. If, have you heard of anything as far as paint burning off, fumes burning off, a finish burning off when you first start up a cast iron wood stove? Because it really had us worried. The smell was terrible. We knew it wasn't the wood that we were putting in. But just it was one of those things that was like, uh-oh, I don't even know if we can use this stove. There's something wrong with it. Or... Maybe it's totally normal and we just have never started up a wood stove from scratch before. So we have a couple days to figure it out before it gets really cold, but um, uh, would love to, you know, if you guys have a comment or have experience with the same thing happening, let us know. And if there's a way that you fixed it or if it went away on its own, and then I will fill you in on how things go with the electrician this week, as well as we have heard from our plumber and he is able to come out on November 11th. So 
a couple weeks away for the plumber to get all of that really wrapped up. So things are getting there. It's like, ah, I wish it was happening faster, but it's getting there. So we'll, we'll keep you updated on the process. We'll keep, keep you updated on all the things going on. So uh, drop us a line if there's any uh, questions that you have about doing an electric trench. Um, we're still figuring it out as well, and we're going to ask the electrician to make sure we got everything ship shape before we call in the inspector. I'd love to get that signed off on and would love to have power in a couple of weeks. We'll see you guys later. See you at the next video and uh, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet and you want to see how this all turns out, hit the subscribe button and that little bell notification and you'll get every video as it comes out. All right, guys, take care. We'll see you next time. Bye.